All right, guys, let's take a look at the application of marginal costing. So managers have to make decisions under different circumstances and over there you need to use your basic technique learned under marginal costing. So let's take a look at the first kind of a decision a manager would face and I can call this to be decision making number one. Decision making number one. All right, so let's take a look at a, uh, at a scenario when a firm has a limited amount of resources or factors of production available. Now you have to choose the most profitable production pattern available. All right, so businesses do go through shortages of resources. These, these shortages could be of raw material. These, these shortages could be of space. They, they could be shortages of labor hours. There could also be shortages of machine hours. Now our job over here is to analyze this that based on the resource availability, what will be the most profitable production plan that a manager can make. All right. Now remember again, we need to apply the basic concept of marginal costing. Marginal costing has already specified that the relevant cost, remember marginal costing would divide its cost as variable cost or fixed cost. So under marginal costing, the relevant cost is actually your variable cost, not your fixed cost. Because in the short run, variable cost is, is the item that one would want to look at and not the fixed cost. Okay, so firms often make multiple products within the same factory. Now because of shortages or any resource constraint, they would have to compromise on the production output of some of that product. Now our job over here is to, to figure this out that which product should be prioritized as number one and which should be the one that should be least prioritized. So all firms would have to do the following. So let's say if a factory is making two products over here, product A and, and product B. Now the things that we need to watch out as a manager is number one, we need to see how much do they earn as contribution per unit? All right. So that's the earning that each product will, will make for me. All right. So remember contribution per unit is selling price minus variable cost. You'll get some contribution for A, you'll get some contribution for B. Now contribution just shows that how much will they earn if, if I make an individual unit of that product. But now I also have to take into account my shortage. So I have to take into account whatever the shortage is. So let's say it could be raw material, labor or anything over here. I have to take into account the limiting factor or their consumption per unit. All right. So how many hours of labor will they consume or how much material do they consume if I make one individual unit? That is again an important element to take into account. So I need to first find out their contributions. How much do they earn? Second, how much do they consume of that resource? Based on that, we will find a very simple metric. All right. So let's just apply this to a very simple example. Let me bring you guys here. All right. So if you guys take a look at this example in this factory, product A earns a contribution of $10 per unit. So if you make a single unit of A, it will earn $10 for you. Whereas B will earn $12 for you. Now, just based on this, one can say, all right, B is much more, uh, much more profitable than A. How about we make B first or how about we prioritize B first? But we also have to take into consideration the kg per unit. So A consumes two kgs per unit, whereas B consumes three kgs per unit. Now you can see B is consuming more kgs than A. So what we'll do is we'll find a very simple metric called contribution upon kg all right or whatever the limiting factor is you could also be contribution upon labor hour or contribution upon upon machine hour so if we find this 10 divided by 2 i will get this to be five dollars per kg whereas for b this will become 12 divided by 3 that is four dollars per kg now we should compare product A and B. So if you guys compare this, A will give you $5 on every kg that it will consume, whereas B will give you $4 on every kg that it will consume. So now 
our decision should not be just based on contribution but but upon contribution per kg so we should rank product a to be as number one that is the product that i should i should prioritize over product b and then i should rank product b as number two all right so the ranking is based on this metric contribution upon kg or we can say contribution upon the limiting factor all right so this metric that we just developed contribution upon limiting factor it's essentially doing two things over here number one it's it's comparing the contribution earned by the product how much does that product earn versus how much of the resource has been consumed by the product based on this a firm can decide which which product to be prioritized over the other products over here and whatever plan we make according to this ranking this should at the end of the day yield the maximum profit available All right so your maximum profit will be based on this metric which is called contribution upon limiting factor all right now i've done few questions on limiting factor so i would want you guys to watch the next two videos i'll explain how to rank the product how to draw a production plan based on the amount of resources available and how to calculate the maximum profit all right hope you guys understand this situation hey there if you like what you saw right now head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers videos revision guides flashcards and academic support all of this is going to make sure that you're completely set for your a levels so i'll see you there on the platform